80s and there are some bands and that was when the the, the legends in Hong Kong sort of started to crop up the band called Beyond was big at that time and there was a band called Ten Ming Pair you know just like follow that and there was a, a, a lot of bands back then and I wasn't really looking out very well and then um, I think eventually back in around night uh, uh, about five uh, six or six to eight years ago I noticed the the place, uh, the event called the Underground, and that's when I go to a lot of shows. Just sort of, I, I went like, wow, you know. So you can see rock bands, and I just go there like religiously. I would go to those shows religiously. Up until the late '90s, maybe it was really a dire scene, from what I've heard. And um, I think that there's a huge difference compared to what I saw maybe ten years ago or nine years ago compared to now. There's just a lot more variety. There's a lot more opportunities I think for venues opening up and allowing original music to come in. So I was back here in the sort of mid 90s and there wasn't much going on back then you know but I was a high school kid and I, I like punk rock so I wanted to go to shows I wanted to I wanted to do what 16 year old guys who want to listen to music want to do you know so we there were some small places where you could get started like uh, places like the warehouse which is now closed it's music uh, it's a music venue, which is a bit of a bummer, but basically anything you could get, and we would do it. Find a little place. We'd set up in farms. We'd set up in fields. We'd play here at the Wanch because this place has been around forever. But yeah, it's, I mean that's that's Hong Kong. It's always been a bit of a DIY thing here, unless you're a Canto pop star, you know. Um, actually, I should point out that back in the '90s, there was another interesting underground event. Um, and it's called uh, Radio Free Hong Kong, and it would be it would be running more or less like um, the underground we see today. Um, and uh, I I and I went to those, and then I dropped off from the rock music community, and just sort of thought, you know, bands no longer exist, or you know, very few bands. And then and then at that time, I I think six to eight years ago, I started going to the shows a lot, and then. And, and then uh, just get to know people. And that, that's basically how it started. I came here in my first year as an undergraduate student. There was nothing to do except go to LKF, right? So I tried to find out any music at all. And the first show that I ever came to was Underground Girls with Guitars 1 or 2. And the first two bands I ever saw were Hungry Ghost and Hard Candy. Two of the best ones I've ever seen. And I, I was just thinking, bloody hell, this is good. And I happened to meet Chris at the very same show. And I asked, can I do anything to help us? She said, yeah, we need someone to write reviews. And within that time, since I've been here, for, this was two years ago, uh, we've had official interns and interviews for interns. So I got just, I just gotten by saying, I'll do this. Hong Kong's got um, a very vibrant live music scene um, in that there are a lot of bands and the bands are of a very high quality. Um, and there's a real, a really fantastic sense of community within that. I think everyone supports each other and uh, people turn up to each other's shows and arrange shows for each other and, and um, yeah it's quite a celebratory live music scene. Everybody wants everyone else to succeed. Music venues in Hong Kong is one of the sort of sticking points. Um, there's, there's small little venues like Experience and The Wanch um, and then there's uh, there's this big venues like the Asia World Expo, and that's kind of it. There's not much in between. There is, of course, Hidden Agenda, but Hidden Agenda is not in a very central location. There are really venues lacking. You've got Hidden Agenda, which has just moved. You've got Hangouts and the Wench. That's about it for me. All the other places are good, but it's still covers bands. You have a lot of very small clubs, pubs. Um, venues like that, maybe they hold 50 to 100 people. Um, then you've got grappers, and then after grappers, I mean, the next thing is basically what high tech or kai tech or whatever it's called, and then Asia Expo. So you don't really have any of those middle, those theaters that you see in the States or Canada or the UK or anywhere in Europe where bands kind of, you know, they, they reach a level where they're playing out to maybe a thousand, two thousand, up to five thousand people. Um, we don't really have that here and I think that that's, you know, that's something that's kind of challenging for bands that are trying to create a bit more momentum behind them. Um, whether or not the Hong Kong scene can 
deal with that. I don't know because it's such a small place. Um, but yet at the same time, there's a lot of diversity in it. So there's not really enough bits and bits of people to break off into their own scenes. Everybody's just kind of got to work together. It's a little bit different to my experience in London where, um, you know, London being such a big city with such a great number of bands, um, it's just huge numbers that you're talking about, that there was much less a sense of a community of like one scene as a whole. It was more lots and lots of small groupings. So you never really felt like, um, you know, to be honest, you could never really feel like you're getting anywhere with that London scene unless you got signed by an indie label. When you compare Hong Kong, Asia as world city to even cities in Asia, but when you go to the rest of the world, then they just pale in comparison, you know, compared to Tokyo and even, even less, you know, developed countries like, you know, the scene in Jakarta and in Indonesia, down in um, Singapore, uh, sort of on par with Hong Kong. But uh, you know, these other countries, I've been there, I've seen it, and it's bigger and it's more vibrant. And, it's kind of sad that a city of this size, with this amount of resources and maybe not so much space, but there must be time. And there's, there's the time and there's the people who want it, but there's not the will from the government to let it happen. I actually don't think there is any obstacle, um, because unless you have defined where you want to, where you want to reach, um, you can't really say there is an obstacle. And um, the bands in Hong Kong want to play, um, and uh, I. I mean, unless you are, what, what the, unless the obstacle is to become an internationally famous band, right? Um, they, they, they're doing very well, I think. They're releasing albums, um, uh, releasing records or anything, or online uh, songs. And um, because of the ease of recording and releasing, um, bands do that all the time, constantly. Unless you want to say, Kento Pop would be replaced by indie rock or, or rock, right? Then we may be able to get into a situation of talking about obstacle, but otherwise I think the bands are doing really well. Well in Hong Kong it's, it's virtually in, it's in, impossible, but it's very difficult to get anywhere because it's all quite mainstream and most of the general public are just not into watching live bands. So, so if you play on the uh, Kowloon side, you don't really get anybody from the Hong Kong Island side going over to see you. I mean not happy about the lack of interaction between people the, well not people scenes really the Chinese speaking bands and the English speaking bands they don't mix enough I just kind of got frustrated when I would go to a night up in Kowloon somewhere and be talking about the kind of guys I come and play with down here and they're like who what and then I go come back down here and I talk to my friends I'm like oh check out this I, I saw this band last night they were they were ace you know like and uh, the same, same response, you know? So my goal really is to uh, get two bands from one side, two bands from the other, whack them together and have some fun, really. We, we try and bring in bands that we, that we love that are hugely influential. Uh, we only bring in bands that we genuinely like because realize that unless we brought bands to Hong Kong, the bands we liked, no one else was gonna do it. I love The Watch and I've played under its roof more times than I can count, but it almost seems to no end at the, when you're just playing to your friends and a couple of drunk guys. When you get to share the stage with a band that you respect and you listen to, it's, it's a different feeling altogether, you know? And that, that's gonna push the scene here as well. So that's really important too, you know? It's not just the grassroots indie stuff, it's also the next tier up, giving you somewhere to go and something to strive for. It's trying to get bands mainstream in, in Hong Kong or to do really well, it's gonna be difficult. I think the best ones we've got at the moment is going to be Pubal International, some Eskimos, Noughts and X's, Nine Maps as well. There, there is a real feeling of things taking off, there's a real feeling of impetus in the Hong Kong music scene at the moment. There's a lot of very high quality bands. Um, it's interesting that um, there seems to be uh, a sort of a, an emergence of um, bands that are combining um, folk with um, uh, punk. Um, or grunge or rock. There seems to be um, a lot of acoustic acts um, that, are, that are really good, like Nine Maps, Noughts and Xs, um, uh, and um, uh, Sun Eskimos, um, those sorts of, of acts. And then you've got a lot of rock bands like David Bowie Knives, Shotgun Politics, uh, Naughty Aliens. Um, and I think um, I think there's a sort of a there's a sort of a 
space between those two sounds that seems to be coming together in Hong Kong? You know, there's a lot of good bands in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of good people in it, and I think it deserves better attention. I hope that more people will uh, be exposed to it and participate in it. I think um, in probably a couple more generations, it's going to just get bigger and bigger because the parents are becoming, you know, rock fans. We, we start to you know, have more and more rock moms, rock parents, and then the bands would, would, would receive more uh, receptions and success. As long as people keep coming to shows, people keep making music, people keep heading out and doing stuff, like, it's going to happen someday, right? For someone like me who's writing news, who's uh, doing radio shows, we, we, we would not run out of bands and uh, we would not run out of events.